Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signar. We are now officially live. We've been hanging out here. We're live every day around 1230 is what I'm trying to get us to. Uh, but thanks for being patient if I'm not always exactly on the time. Uh, this is an important story. Obviously, there's so much going on in uh, Kentucky and elsewhere uh, with these these tornadoes that killed 74 so far. Uh, thousands have been left without water, power. Uh, the carnage is just so depressing to look at as you see the overhead shots, etc. of what's happening here. Here's a, here's a sort of drone drone shots of uh, of the the damage there this is in kentucky city of mayfield it's just heart-wrenching to see this stuff um not much warning these tornadoes just drop and the damage is just just awful as you see this there's just it, how do you how do you begin to even rebuild some of these things the just completely leveled some of the city uh and when you see this and you see these the it's just it's sad man it is sad because what do you do what do you do now? Uh, there's so much that needs to be rebuilt and figured out. People's everything's just lost if they didn't lose their loved ones or themselves, which is obviously the first priority. You got to make sure you, everyone is safe. And for those that aren't safe, everything they ever had to their name gone in the blink of an eye. It is just a horrific tragedy out of anybody's hands. What can you do? Um, be less, I mean, again, it makes you, it hits you in a, in a new way when you lose everything you own of just like, well, did you need any of it? As long as your loved ones are there, I'm sure a lot of them are just sad, but happy. But sadly, a lot of loved ones also lost here. And it's just, when you see this footage, oh man, it just wrecks me. I, I can't even imagine what that, that feeling must be like as, as people are just stumbling upon this, their, their, are their homes and they're just gone. They're just gone. The whole home, everything in it, out, gone. Uh, the rebuilding of the efforts can take so long uh, as they, you know, Kentuckians, where the, most of the damage really hit Kentucky hard. Um, ripped the state over the weekend, leveled communities, officials and rescue workers were getting clearer picture of how widespread the destruction was. Death toll again uh, said 74 people in Kentucky across five states. At least 88 had been killed in the storms, the tore a path and destruction from Arkansas to Illinois. Um, this was a brutal uh mother nature at its worst uh despite internal feel uh, initial fears that dozens were dead in mayfield candle factory company spokesman said eight employees were killed 102 survived earlier monday the state was working to confirm the company's numbers i pray that it's accurate because we feared much much worse meanwhile 450 national guard members were mobilized in kentucky with 95 searching for the presumed dead. Bashir said he expects the death toll to rise in the coming days to at least 109 people. Are, uh, 109 people are still unaccounted for. Um, President Biden plans to tour the damage Wednesday after signing a disaster declaration for Kentucky. Uh, more than 1,000 properties were destroyed and more than 20,000 people remain without power. Uh, it, it's just unbelievable. 10,000 homes and businesses had no water. Uh, at least 30 tornadoes from Friday to Saturday struck Kentucky, Illinois, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas. One of the twisters that hit Kentucky is believed to have traveled 200 miles or more, possibly challenging the national record of 219 set in, two, in 1925. So this was a terrible one. AccuWeather says the preliminary estimate of the tornado caused about $18 billion in damage and economic loss. I mean, did you see these photos? It's unbelievable. Here's the candle factory before... And here it is after. Holy crap. That is just. I can't even. Fat, and both. Look at that. It's all, all of it. It's all just gone. Here's the here's another community a county courthouse before the tornado and after the tornado. It's just unbelievable. Here's the Amazon warehouse in, uh, in Edwardsville, Illinois. We're going to talk about this as well. Uh, a lot of it managed to make through, but as you can see there, one end of it didn't. Tornadoes, the edge of the tornado hit half of this building, uh, keeping the other uh, uh, there. But my God, just tragic. And that's Mayville with all the homes intact. And then uh, afterwards, just complete nothingness. Ugh. It's so sad. It's so sad. Uh, so, I mean, wh what can we do is the real question I want to help us with. And also, you know, how to help. We're going to get to some of those. There's a lot of links and things. Really, you can give blood. If you're near these areas, it's a huge thing right now. They need more blood to get over there. So blood donations really are, are something a lot of people are asking for. 
There is the Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund, um, as well as uh, you can donate to the, always the Red Cross um, to donate or to give blood to your local Red Cross. Salvation Army has mobilized food and shelter. Uh, there's a Mayfield Community Foundation has set up a GoFundMe to support the relief efforts. I'll put a link here uh, in the description in the comments. So if you want to go scroll through and find ways you can help, uh, PBS has a good link uh, of places and how to avoid charity scams, et cetera, that a lot of people will take advantage of uh, in times of crisis, which is so depressing. But I, wa I want to talk about sort of this this story really hit me and it really made me mad. And I want to get your thoughts. Does it? Look, obviously, you don't get a lot of warning with tornadoes. However, a lot of these factory workers who wanted to, you know, as the warnings were coming and this was barreling across over the weekend, uh, the, the, we're going to get to Amazon in a second because similar accusations are now being leveled at Amazon. But this was a separate uh, factory, Mayfield Consumer Products. They're denying these charges. But uh, five employees said they were told they couldn't leave the candle factory to seek safety. Workers at the Kentucky fa uh, candle factory destroyed by a tornado said supervisors threatened to fire them if they left their jobs early to try to avoid the twister's path mayfield consumer products factory was destroyed on friday after a tornado barreled through the area eight people were confirmed dead and eight remain missing uh, at the factory as of sunday but more than 90 others have been located however several employees say their supervisors and team leaders told them they could lose their jobs if they left the factory to seek safety Elijah Johnson said that's what uh, said that when he asked to leave, one of the supervisors told him he'd be fired. Even with the weather like this, you're still going to fire me? The 20 year old asked. Uh, Johnson said yes. Mayfield, uh, the manager said yes. Mayfield consumer spokesman Bob Ferguson says the allegations were absolutely untrue and that employees can leave anytime they want to leave and they can come back the next day. You can leave whenever you want, really, and just come back. That's a weird rule. I'm not used to that rule. Usually, if you just leave your work without an excuse. Most businesses don't like, I mean, they'll, this seems like a good excuse if you want, obviously, but anyway, this seems like extreme damage control. And, and how do you, how do these, how does the spokesperson really know what was said? Shouldn't they like do an investigation? How can they be con so confirmed that maybe a supervisor didn't overstep and say it? I, the, the reaction from the spokespeople is clear damage control to me and I, I'm not buying it. Five employees told the network they were either told they couldn't leave or were, weren't verbally told they had the option. In addition, company CEO said workers were told to shelter inside the factory's bathrooms, which had windowless concrete walls and steel roof because management didn't want to send workers out into the storm. Now, that's a good excuse. If there really was no warning here and they were like, well, no, you can't leave because we don't want to be responsible and you have to go seek shelter here because it's about to hit us. Well, being in a concrete bathroom, probably wiser than being in your car running around willy-nilly outside, to be completely fair. Or is it? What's so crazy is these factories, Amazon included, we're going to get there, have no safety protocols or meetings to ensure that in case this happens, the workers know what the protocol is. And to me, that's the biggest fault here. They can claim like, oh, we weren't doing anything. But if they were telling, honestly, the employees should have a, the right. If they want to go run into a hurricane to go try to see their family, that I mean that that should be their right. It should be their right. It might not be the safest bet, but my God, you should be allowed to leave without peril. You know, worrying of being fired, right? So uh, I'm curious what you guys think of this. Let, let's go through it all, and then I want to get to what Amazon did because Amazon, especially Amazon, should know better. Both of these companies should. Um, everyone was aware of bad weather. But as we're all taught, even as children, the first thing you do is don't get in your car, Prop said, that this is a manufacturing facility. You would never believe that. You would never, you would have, you would have thought this would have been one of the more safest places to be, and yet this storm proved differently. However, after team leaders mistakenly thought the tornado was no longer a danger, they sent everyone back to work. When the tornado hit, forklift after, uh, operator Mark Sackton told NBC News, the factory tiles and concrete started falling. Everyone started running, so I just dropped to the ground. I got into a fetal position, and the concrete slab fell on top of me. Jesus. Sa Saxon said he was then picked up by the twister and ended up in the building's collapsed roof. He survived with minor cuts and bruises. Can you imagine that? Holy moly. Slab falls on him. Tornado lifts them both up, and somehow he's lifted and ends up in safety on the collapsed roof. Whole, I mean, which could have been under, but somehow the tornado lifted him out. He says he's still haunted by the way he was treated by his higher-ups. It hurts because I, I feel like we were neglected, Saxon says. 
Whew, this this infuriates me. So there's that. The, co the, the company is denying it, saying, oh, well, no, we didn't want to. And I'm sure they're going to now say, well, we couldn't leak them out. It, was, it wasn't safe. However, if this accusation really truly is, you know, that they deemed it was no longer a danger and put them back to work, and then everything went to, he to hell, well, yeah, there needs to be some accountability here. Now, Amazon was not in Kentucky. Amazon was in Illinois, and the building collapsed. Uh, now, let's get through this. Um, Amazon employees have been discouraged from taking time off for natural disasters because it would slow down production. Now that I believe, <laughs> I believe Amazon's on, and I've, I've spoken to workers who work at Amazon. They do not give an S about the employees. The ones I've spoken to, this is the same company that makes you pee in bottles. So they're not late because they need to get you that prime the night of, otherwise they have to pay more. So they take it on their employees. Like, come on, come on, come on. Why we need you to go faster, faster. I, I know of, a, I, I heard of an employer employee who, you know, did his job well, got his, all his tasks done. And then what do they make the guy do after he's done? Well, he's got to go stay later to go cover up for all the slow people and then never reward or pay them extra. So they take advantage of the hard workers and then burn them in the ground. There's just no rhyme or reason to what a lot of these warehouses do. And there's so many of them spotting up in all over the country. It's, 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 it's crazy. Um, but Amazon, come on, come on, dudes. You make way too much money, way too much money to not have protocols in place to ensure that there are like, what happens in, in, in this? What, what do we do? How do we make sure our, our employees can get out of there safely, or at least know they're going to be put somewhere safely in, in you know, in, in a situation like this. So, um, so let's go through this account on Amazon because I'm even more mad at Amazon. I mean, I'm mad at this candle factory. Don't get me wrong, but Amazon again, again. Day after an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, collapsed amid Friday's tur a tornado killing six workers, an Amazon employee in a fulfillment center in neighboring Indiana took the internal message board to vent. I know it's the weekend and Amazon was busy blasting Michael Strahan and other wealthy people into space, but can we get any kind of statement about the mass casualty incident in Illinois? <laughs> yeah, but bravo, employee. <laughs> bravo. I feel like something could be said or a plan of action to review tornado and severe weather safety could be announced, adding that we had a tornado watch down... Uh, Touchdown, not far from the Jacksonville, Indiana Fulfillment Center as well. Uh, but, but before we even go, let's remind everybody, yeah, what is Amazon and Jeff Bezos focus on right now? Spending so much money to blast Michael Strahan into space. Yeah, that's, that's a good use of resources. Let's keep sending celebrities into space. Cool. Let's use all the money that we're stealing from our workers just to put it towards... Blue Origin, so I can, you know, beat Elon Musk and get to space quicker and make space travel for the rich elite. So when this company falls to hell, we all the rich people can fly out of here and have somewhere to go. Because if the rich don't figure that out quickly, they're doomed. <laughs> so part of me is kind of frustrated because I just, this is an exit strategy. This is like 20, 2012 exit strategy, the movie, where it's like clearly all the rich people are like, we got to start practicing this space travel because when everything goes to hell, which it's clearly gonna with all these tornadoes and everything else, we need to get out of here. So if we don't start now. We're not going to get there, people. And so it's sickening when you see this and then you go back and you see this. The, the money is being spent in, in the weirdest places. So now Amazon is being criticized, you know, a little bit. It'll, it'll be over soon. Yeah, fake space. Thank you. Someone, I saw that. Blue Origin doesn't go all the way across like uh, SpaceX does. It's like a right above the line. It's a whole thing where Elon, all the, all the and I guess Richard Brandt, all the billionaires are like, well, yours isn't really, oh my God, it's so stupid. Uh, fake space. There you go. Um, but let's go through this. All right. So uh, the, com the complaint, one of several, posted the inter company's internal voices, voice of associates message board and provided to the in Intercept reflects a concern expressed by a dozen employees who spoke about the lack of workplace safety afforded to workers across the country, not just related to extreme weather events, but to hazards in general. Many workers, all of whom requested anonymous, anonymous to be anonymous to protect their jobs, said they had never had a tornado or even a fire drill over the course of their careers at Amazon. Dating back up to six years, no fire drills, let alone tornado drills. They don't want to fund that. They don't want to, they can't afford to do drills. Are you crazy? They got to get your packages out because they've now overtaken the post office. They're now the new po you know, post office for sale. Uh, 
Over the course of their careers, six years, several expressed that they would be unsure of what to do in an emergency. In one case, an Amazon contractor fearing Hurricane Ida asked to go home early, but was told that leaving would adversely affect their performance quota. Amazon has not responded to the Intercept's request for comment about why employees were not instructed to stay home amid the tornado warnings. The company took an additional step yesterday by encrypting internal help ticket messages about the Illinois facility, making them inaccessible to most workers. According to an employee who provided screenshots before and after the messages were encrypted, Amazon did not respond to a request for comment on why the company, the records, had been encrypted. Like, how shady is this? They went in and started encrypting their own employees' complaints. Full transparency, huh, Bezos? Interesting. wonder why he wants to get out. Messages revealed a communication breakdown in which corporate failed to notify employees about the tornado, even as it happened. Corporate and IT were troubleshooting network outages and found out the building was hit by a tornado from the media, said the employee who provided the communication. What the correspondence showed was the, that initially nobody knew what was happening. More and more people joined in on the tickets to troubleshoot the issues, only to find out from the media that the building was hit by a tornado. The narrative was absolutely heartbreaking, the employee said. It looks like they, have, they had almost no warning. Horrifying details are emerging about the tornado disaster in Amazon's warehouse in Illinois, where at least six were killed. Before he died, Larry Verdon reportedly texted his girlfriend, Amazon won't let us leave. He leaves behind four children. What do you mean? Amazon, we, uh, went, uh, let's see. Let's get this tweet. Do they show us the full text? I'm fueling up now. Well, I will be home after the storm. What do you mean? Amazon won't let us leave. All it's doing here is lightning. So what are you doing? I hope everything's okay. I love you. Oh my God. Tragic. Amazon won't let us leave. <sighs> now, if Amazon wasn't letting them leave because they're like, look, we have serious safety protocols in place. We can't let our, ex our employees leave because when this happens, we need them to stay here because this is the fortified, safe place to be, yada, yada, yada. That's not what they did. That's not what was going on. That was not what was happening. Now, again, not safe to be out in your car either, but shouldn't there be some sort of guideline in place? Why does Amazon not have that? They have too many facilities across the world. They have too many employees. They're already take, taken advantage of, let's be, let's be frank. And now on top of this, when, when, when a fire happens in a warehouse, they don't know what to do? That's terrifying. Who, why, is, why, is, why are more people talking about this? We give them so much damn money, and there's no transparency, accountability, nothing. They literally can just work their workers into the ground. And if anybody out there works for Amazon, you got stories. I don't know. Let's, I, what do I care, man? I got. I got. I'm. I'm a, I want to help the people. I really do. And what can we do against Amazon? Well, I can do the best I can, which is spreading the word. So thanks everybody who supports and everything else. This is. I'm just. This makes me so angry. This makes me so angry. He had four kids, and Amazon wouldn't let him leave. I mean. Workers are demanding better safety practices to avoid another calamity like the one in Edwardsville. I'm sure we, uh, we all have heard about the Amazon in Illinois that totally got destroyed by a tornado. Wrote a second employee in the Indiana Fulfillment Center. Curious as to why we don't have tornado drills like we do fire drills. So, okay, so he does have fire drills. And this one says he does have a fire drill protocol. I've been here six and a half years and never once been involved in a tornado safety drill in my shift, as well as, not, as, well as have not taken part in a fire safety drill in about two years. Echo to third employee, this whole situation has got me thinking our site really needs to revise its safety drills because you never know when disaster and tragedy can strike. Facts. But that costs money, guys. That costs money. We got to save that sweet money to blast Michael Strahan off into space. Well, fake space. Not real space, right, Bezos? Like right above the line that matters. Right below it. Right below it. All that money. Just to maybe sort of look at space from afar. Sickening. Absolutely sickening. Asked why so many employees had not practiced safety drills, Kelly Natell, an Amazon spokesman, replied an email, emergency response training is provided to new employees, and that training is reinforced throughout the year. BS. They're telling you it wasn't. You didn't answer the question. Of course you're not going to answer the question because you're caught. One of former employee, 48-year-old Leanne Webster, served on the safety committee at the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Kent, Washington, from 2016 until last year, Webster said that she repeatedly brought up safety concerns with management, but she was often rebuffed. A particular concern to her was the lack of safety drills, which she said had not been practiced for several years. So Kelly Natell, 
What about that one? She's just a disgruntled employee. Is that where you're going gonna to badmouth her? Drills are the most important part of safety, Webster said. It gives you a sense of where you're supposed to go. And completing the task, even in simulated sim situation, can prepare your body and mind to remain calm. People tend to freak out in emergency situations. Facts. Webster's view mirrors that of the federal government. Guidance from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration states that workers need to be trained and plans need to be practiced to ensure that personnel are familiar with what to do in the event of a tornado. On Monday, CNBC reported that OSHA had opened a six-month investigation in Edwards Roll warehouse collapse. Among the few employees who told the Intercept that they had partic participated in safety drills, many described pandemonium o owing to a rushed exercise with little to no direction communicated. I've had better drills in public schools than an employee at the Indiana Fulfillment Center. When an employee in Indiana called for safety drills, a manager told him that it's difficult to have every shift participate with people on vacation or in different schedules, according to internal messages shared with the Intercept. So basically they're like, Look, it's difficult to have a safety drill because we got to keep the fulfillment going. So we can't really afford safety drills. So is that cool? We're just going to skip them because we got to get these prime packages out. Other employees said they had been told that drills had been paused due to COVID. Uh, but Webster said that her facility safety drills had not been conducted since well before the pandemic. Nope, she said the COVID excuse. It's become it's because it would cost them a lot of money to stop production long enough to do it. Totally believe that. Totally believe that. Amazon is time is money. Get those packages. Stuff them in the box. Get them out. Put another one in the box. Get it out. That's Amazon. In the wake of the Illinois warehouse collapse, Bloomberg reported on workers concerned over Amazon's phone ban, a, pol a policy prohibiting employees from bringing their cell phones to work. Having already instituted for years, Amazon temporarily suspended the policy during the pandemic, but has since begun to roll it back out. Workers told Bloomberg Spencer soap that the feared inflammation is their respective facilities uh, because they would be unable to get weather notifications in the event of another disaster. They also just don't want people to be filming them peeing in bottles and showing how, you know, awful the work conditions are, right? That's the real reason why they don't want the phones there. Aside from people being distracted, I believe that too. But come on, they, they don't want more evidence out there. Um, Webster said that while phones could help, phone alerts are no substitute for a meaningful safety program. Workplaces Amazon can be so loud, she explained, that you often wouldn't be able to hear a severe weather alert on your phone. Many workers also raised issues with management's refusal to grant time off so they could stay home during severe weather. In one case uh, earlier this year, an Amazon contractor, a contractor in southern Illinois sent a letter to Amazon requesting several hours of a shift in preparation for Hurricane Ida. An Amazon seller support manager replied to the contractor's performance, replied that the contractor's performance would suffer. It's important to confirm the shipment of orders by the expect expected date so that customers can see the status of their shipped orders online, manager told the contract contractor. Orders that are, sh that are ship confirmed late may lead to increased negative claims, negative feedback, and or customer contacts and negligent uh, impact on customer satisfaction. All right, well, I'm an Amazon customer. I'm an Amazon customer, and, I, and I, I'd like to know other customers in the chat. Are you cool with your package being a day late to make sure the workers behind the scenes are getting paid well and are safe? Because I'm totally down. I, I'm totally down. I can prepare and get my packages, you know, next day, two days, like they used to. I think we could deal, guys. We don't need it immediately. We're getting a little obsessed and it's like, need it right now. I think it'd be cool if we could like do it. But the problem is Amazon will do that and then they'll just charge more money. They'll, they'll take the time and then they'll just pocket it and charge us more for them to do the safety. That's constantly what happens with these places. But the reality of this excuse that they're telling us, well, customers would have negative feedback, et cetera. No, why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask us? Because I'd happily wait a day. I'd happily wait two days if it means your employees are taken care of and safe. Because God, we gotta, I understand it's an important job. You've now taken over the world. You give us all our shit. I get it. All right. Let's take, let's take care of the workers. But what's so frustrating is I'm willing to do that, but Bezos, you're not? How much money do you got, dude? How much damn money you got? Well, clearly a lot because, again, they're sending Michael Strahan into space. You, you can't give up a little bit of this money to, to, to figure out how to make this go better? I, I'm just I'm, I'm floored. Why do we keep letting people like Bezos and these billionaires get away with this shit? I, 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 it just floors me. It floors me. These people, like these these super rich corporations and the people that run them, are just awful, awful people. How much more money do you need? 
How much more money do you need? You're so desperate and have so much money that you're literally doing your midlife crisis by flying off into space because you can, because you got enough money. Who needs that much money? Like, my God, it's never going to buy you happiness, Jeff. It's never going to buy you happiness, man. You are at a level where you literally have everything. And I don't feel for you at all. <laughs> so, dude, at this point, can't you start giving back? Can't you start giving it all away and actually help your employees to make a real company that we're all proud of? It's sickening. It's sickening to me. How much, how much do you need? <laughs> you don't need that much. You don't need that much. <sighs> Webster went on to say Amazon's safety problems exceed, extend far beyond extreme weather. In Minnesota, recent reporting that National Employment Law Project found that Amazon warehouse workers are injured at more than double the rate of non-Amazon warehouses in the state. The other big concern is that people are hurting themselves trying to rush to make numbers so they don't get written up. These are people who, like, need the money. They're getting paid shit, and they have to just keep killing themselves to get these packages out. Like, and you got to go back and remember, postal employees went crazy too. Same demand. This like fulfillment and the, and the, and the, the, the got to get it done, got to get it done, got to get it done, can make people go postal. That's what the word was. So Amazon's starting to feel it too. And here's the chance of like, you guys are making so much money. Take care of your employees. You will have better, we will all be better off if everyone's happy to be there. If people want to, are like, I want to work at Amazon because they take care of you. We got a supermarket here. Politically, they piss a lot of people off, but it's called Publix. And I'm telling you, man, I know people who love working there because good benefits. They take care of you. They don't overwork you. Chick-fil-A lets you off on Sundays. Like they're in and out Burger, another one. They take care of their employees. There are certain companies out there that do their best to make sure their employees are happy and want to work there and have the benefits and reason to be there. But no, some of these rich people just think, I need to make more, I need to make more. Let's just churn and burn, churn and burn, churn and burn. Who cares if they're getting injured? We need to get the fulfillment out. We need to make the numbers. There's no product coming through, your numbers are low. There's no product coming through, your numbers are low. You can get a write-up and possibly lose your job. That's a big complaint. So people would rush and then they would get hurt. It could just as easily have been us. We would have been out. We would not have been ready. An employee said at the Indiana facility uh, regarding the tornado, they put in all internal memo that says they're, we're rebuilding. But what are we doing to prevent this in the future? It's always profit over employees. <laughs> That's insane. The internal memo from Amazon. Don't worry. We're rebuilding the facility as if they give a crap. Like, how are you going to make sure the other employees don't ever have to deal with this again? Don't worry. Don't worry. We're rebuilding we're rebuilding the facility. Eric, I see other people chat like, yeah, we love working for Publix. It's like, it's a supermarket. You wouldn't think it, right? You'd be like, oh, who wants to work at the grocery store? But I, I'm always amazed. I'm always amazed because the workers enjoy being there. They feel like they're being taken care of. When you take care of workers, they work harder. If you constantly go at them, it's, it always fails. Pamela, thanks. Sadly, and you know, because she, you know, she has experience in, in this field. Sadly, 99% of businesses do not care about their employees. They were forced to pretend during the pandemic, but things are quickly going backwards again. Well, now they're going to be forced to, they're going to have, they're, what's interesting about the pandemic, uh, Pamela, because so many people have been uh, taking unemployment for so long and not here to judge. Some will, but I'm not here to judge to get that money. Uh, but what's interesting now is people are like, well, I don't want to go back to that job. It pays me shit. And so a lot of these companies aren't getting custom employers, employees rather. And so they're all being forced to look in the mirror and be like, crap, we got to actually pay more. Which is like, yeah, what a thought. Pay your, pay your employees a living wage? Huh, there's an idea. <laughs> it's crazy, guys. And I know a lot of people are struggling out there to, to not only get the job, to get to find that job, but then to afford daycare so you can go to that job. And then you got to get a second job to pay for the daycare it's maddening what's happening in the world right now. It's so sad. And I, 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 I'm, I feel for so many of you. Uh, but anyway, I, what I don't feel for is Amazon. So Amazon, F you, what you did. You should, I'm grateful for the criticizing, as we should. This, how do we do better? You got you to gotta start putting better health and safety policies in, and they're only going to do it if we raise the pressure. So here we are, once again, raising the pressure on the big corporations, the people that don't want to be the attention that's what we try to do here when we can. When I saw this, I wanted to... I, 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 look, this story is tragic. These tornadoes are so sad. I don't want this to become the tragedy channel. I, I, so I sort of was avoiding these updates because 
but I, I did want to I did want to touch upon it because I want to make sure people know on ways to help. Uh, but when I saw Amazon, just sort of all these people, they they should have known better. They absolutely should have known better. They should have at least attempted to have some process in that makes it look like they care about their employees, but they clearly don't. So seeing this was was really frustrating, and seeing these this text message, Amazon won't let us leave. How dare you, man? Shame on you, Amazon. Shame on you, Bezos. You're the one in charge still. I know he's relinquished CEO or some stupid board level changes. Doesn't matter to me. You you have the power to change this. And you aren't out there doing good. You're wasting time going to space with your brother as if we're all impressed by that. No one cares, dude. You look like such an idiot. You're just rich. Cool. But you're clearly not happy. Let's be honest. Who thinks Jeff Bezos is actually happy? Who thinks he's actually happy? Money doesn't buy you happiness, man. If you're that desperate that you got to go fly off into space, there's something inside you haven't fulfilled yet. <laughs> you're figuring it out. So at the end of the day, just be, be happy to know that even the richest dude in the world still has problems and isn't happy. Gives me a little solace to know that since he's not actually taking care of his employees. Uh, it's so weird. You think of that much money, you'd start I, I get to that point where you'd like, I want to give back. I want to at least help my employees. We've built this. Let's do it right since I can afford to, which sadly so many people can't afford to, but I can. Do some good here, Amazon. You have the opportunity. Prove it to us. This is sickening. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Do you blame Amazon? Do you think they should have known better? I mean, honestly, sending these people out to their cars to try and drive away may not have been safer. But the fact that they had no protocol in place, no safety guidelines, is so sad and terrifying. And the fact that the now their their biggest thing to fix is how do we rebuild fast so we can fulfill all these packages that we just lost? That's their biggest concern? That's sickening, man. That's sickening. What do you guys think? We've got lots more to cover here. I'd, if you haven't already, can you please hit that subscribe button? Hit that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button if you want more stories like this. Uh, channels like ours can't thrive without your support because we're talking about stuff that's uncomfortable to a lot of powerful people. So I'm so grateful for all you guys who have supported, uh, whether just by liking or supporting by joining, becoming a member of the channel. Uh, really helps the channel thrive and keep going. So thank you for helping me be able to get the news out that's important to talk about the stories that no one's really wanting to talk about. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I really want to do here. So I'm so grateful for your support, showing up here every day, watching the content, liking that content, and donating when you can. So thank you guys so much. We're not done here. If you're watching live, we've got lots more to go through. However, I just wanted to make sure I clipped this one to get the word out we got more to talk about here live so stay tuned give me two seconds